name is Sonia Cote and I am the executive chef and co-owner of Hillside Pharmacy and Eden East. I didn't grow up in Austin, I've been here about 10 years, uh, always living on the east side. It's changed a lot in the past, you know, 10 years, 10, 15 years, and especially within the last few years. I'm from Rhode Island and like a lot of chefs, you know, always trying to recreate what they knew in their childhood experience. You know, this, my mom made the best spaghetti, you know, you try to recreate that in a certain way. And, you know, share it with somebody, and it's all about love, and, and that's the whole point, that's what we're doing. Both of my restaurants are different in concept. Uh, Hillside Pharmacy has more of a, you know, new American uh, set menu, pretty casual. You could probably eat there five times a week and not, you know, get bored with it. We have full bar, great happy hour, a raw bar, Bloody Marys and oysters can't really go wrong and then we get to feature oysters from New England where I'm from and a lot of times they're from Rhode Island. Um, it's a wonderful environment. My partner there, uh, Mickey Spencer, she designed it and it's like kind of an art piece within itself uh, and then we get to put food into it as well. Eden East is a totally different concept where it's reservation only, it's, it's a five course prefix, you, you know you come in for special occasions, you book your private events here. It's, it's not a, a daily kind of eating experience. And the name Eden East comes from the fact that we are in East Austin and also east of Eden, Steinbeck, which is, you know, the Grapes of Wrath and that whole, you know, if we don't take care of our farms and we're all going to be in the Dust Bowl. It kind of resonates and kind of sticks with you, I think. And it's also the name of a strip club down the street. There you go. It's true. I think they changed the name because the people were get they were getting calls. We've gotten calls as well where people will call us and be like, "You've got some ladies in there. <laughs> like, what is going on with the ladies tonight?" Eden East is basically a supper club, like how you would have your typical farm dinner. This one is just here every week and has a lot more stability than like a sit supper club. Since it does change every single week, it allows us to have maximum creativity, you know, and um, applying things like preservations and, you know, fermentations and kind of building our pantry and use, being able to kind of use things from the past seasons and kind of allows us a lot more time and uh, to put the effort towards the menu for the week. I think my favorite season is the changing of the season. Like I love uh, getting to the point where we start seeing a whole new crop coming, like the harvest season. You know, but it's always very specific to the time of year. It always happens right when you're ready for it to happen, where you're just like, I can't take any more eggplant, you know? Something that makes us different is the fact that we are in Austin, Texas, in the middle of the city right now. Like This is about three miles from city center and it looks like we're out on a farm. And well, we are. We are on a farm, but it's right in the city. And I, I think that that's really something special. <laughs> well, behind me directly is the herb garden where Glen Apollo plants their herbs for all year and then further in the field we have broccoli and sweet potatoes are happening right now. Malabar spinach directly behind. And it's five acres worth of vegetables. This is, I mean, a southern tradition okra. These flowers are edible as well. They're really good if you dip them in some tempura and fry them up. This variety that Glen and Paula grow is really my favorite. It's, I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't have like that woody look that a lot of okra has. It's super tender all the way to the stem. You can eat, eat the whole thing. Um, here we have our beehives for the honey that we sell at the market. Um, for dinner service, we do lots of different things. We make vinaigrettes out of honey. We garnish the plate. We, tonight we're doing a, a vodka uh, that has been infused with fig and this honey here for a cocktail. Springdale Farm, the farmers put on a, a farmer's market basically, or a farm stand every Wednesday and Saturday on site in the little farmhouse behind us. So a lot of chefs 
come here to buy their ingredients and I have the luxury of just being here. <laughs> Not just chefs shop here, it's a lot of um, people that want fresh food and then they, you know, they get to have a little bit of a social time with the farmers and, and you know, they'll run into their neighbors. It's kind of a community hub right here. This is the end of the season. We're seeing the last of the summer crops for um, for Texas and starting to see some greens like mustard greens, ruby streak. That's uh, my newest favorite right now. It's uh, so spicy and delicious. Um, we're still seeing a bunch of eggplants. These little, little cute little um, fairy tale eggplants. It's on our dish for this evening as well as uh, we have a tempura fried okra for a vegetarian option tonight. Um, but this is where we get our inspiration and uh, know what we're going to cook for the weeks to come. We've come a long way with the, with the local board movement, I think, um, throughout the United States at this point. Um, and a lot of people are more aware of the importance of eating food locally sourced, you know, how that can help with the economy, how it helps with your well-being by knowing your grower and knowing where your food's coming from and eating seasonal for nutritional purposes, you know, all of those things that we've learned. If I have a, an experience, like whether it be a travel experience or um, you know a taste experience or an art experience, I like to take those elements and apply them to our weekly meal here at Eden. So it changes every week. So I could take all of these influences that I've learned, like the oldest restaurant in the world, and they had fire roasted pig, like suckling pig that they've been doing for hundreds and hundreds of years. And, take that concept and try to recreate it here but put our own Texas twist on it you know it makes it really fun and uh, inventive and and um, artistic to be able to take all these influences and apply it to an ever-changing seasonal menu.